Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second day of this conference of ICGov. Uh, my name is Gideon Litchfield. I work for The Economist. Um, I've worked in various roles, and right now my job is technology and society correspondent based in New York. Um, I've spent a lot of time living in different countries, looking at how governments interact with citizens, usually not in the electronic way. Uh, so it's quite interesting for me to be here and uh, to talk about some of the issues that are being discussed. Um, I'm very pleased to be chairing this panel on international perspectives. I do have, however, a small complaint. Yesterday I put out a tweet saying that I was chairing this panel and invited people to submit questions for the panelists. I didn't get a single reply. Now, what would people say if The Economist published that at the ICGov conference nobody uses Twitter? It would be very embarrassing. So I expect by the end of this conference that you all, will all be tweeting. Maybe we can set the record for uh, the, most, the most languages tweeted at a single event. It would, be a, it would be a great record to set. There are some 60 countries, I think, participating here, which is a very impressive <coughs> number. Uh, the original plan was to have all 60 countries represented on the panel this morning, uh, but there weren't enough microphones. So um, we have only six, but it's a very diverse range of six. Um, and I think this diversity is a very good thing because uh, we have Estonia, Slovenia, Colombia, Greece, Russia, and Palestine. People were asking me yesterday, why, why is this country in the panel? Why is that country in the panel? Um, I think one of the reasons that e-governance is an interesting subject is that we have these terms that are very common that we use across countries, but you know, terms like interoperability and e-voting, e-participation, universal IDs, but these terms actually mean completely different things in every, in every situation, in every context, just as every place speaks its own language. If you're a small country where, uh, you know, if, oh, sorry, if you're a large country where, um, you know, all the ministries have their own systems, then interoperability is a huge, huge headache. If you're a small country where half the ministries still keep their records on paper, then it's, it's a much more tractable problem. Um, if only a third of your population uses the internet, then it means something very different to implement electronic IDs and something very different what you can do with them to if 80% of the population has internet access. Um, these IDs have a completely different political context in different countries. In some countries, they're seen as an invasion of privacy. In others, people see the, the possibility of having a verifiable electronic ID as something like a basic human right, and they welcome it. Um, in some places, putting certain transactions online is a way to reduce corruption. In other, other places, it's a way to reduce costs, and so the imperatives are very different. Uh, in a, um, if you are in a country whose where more than half of the citizens actually live outside of the territory, uh, then um, if, if you're dealing with a large diaspora like Palestine, for instance, then the issues of communicating with your people and offering them services changes radically from if most of them are inside the borders. Uh, if your population is dispersed over a very large area like Russia, uh, then providing certain services in electronic form becomes much more uh, crucial uh, and has a much greater impact maybe than uh, if, if you're a very concentrated population. Um, and as Artyom Yermolaev uh, from the Moscow city government reminded us yesterday, it's one thing to provide e-ticketing if everybody is riding buses. It's another thing if some of them are riding camels. So I think it's very good that we have this diverse representation on the panel. Slovenia and Estonia are among the leaders in this part of Europe in, uh, on the UN e-government rankings. Colombia is the leader in Latin America, but Colombia has a population of 45 million. Slovenia and Estonia have one or two million. Uh, Greece, as we will hear today, is using e-government to help it deal with a very specific situation, which is overcoming the economic crisis. Palestine is the only country that is not represented in the UN e-government rankings. Maybe with the vote that's uh, happening in the UN now, by the time the next conference comes around, it will be in the rankings, inshallah. Um, so, um, I'm going to start this discussion by offering each of the panelists uh, time to uh, say something about what is happening with e-governance in their own countries. Um, because we have six of them, we have an hour and a half of this discussion, and time is very limited. Uh, I'm going to ask them to each keep the seven minutes for their first part of the presentation, and after that we'll have a panel discussion. 
Uh, now, there isn't a timer, so I've taken my own e-initiative, and I'm, this, is, this is why we buy iPads, really. Uh, I'm going to uh, put this here, and everyone will know exactly how much time is remaining to them. And afterwards, they'll go back to the table, and we'll have a, a roundtable discussion, and hopefully some time for questions. So uh, I'm not going to read out their bios. The bios are all in the books. Uh, you know who they are. So I'm going to ask Maria Carolina Hoyos from Colombia to come up first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Maria Hoyos, and I represent the um, government of Colombia. And I want to start um, talking about talking about the, um, our digital technology plan that it was uh, announced uh, to um, Colombia and also to the world, if I can say that, uh, last year when President Santos arrived to the presidency. So our main goal is uh, reduce poverty. And we know that is a, a direct relationship between poverty and Internet users. So we are right now, uh, like in this part, with uh, Brazil, Vietnam, and Mexico, and we pretend to move forward and increase uh, the penetration of Internet. As I, as I said, uh, the most important thing for us is to reduce poverty. So we have been increased in uh, the um, penetration of uh, mobile phones, computers, and Internet, but we have to work better in fixed and uh, uh, in Internet for fixed uh, homes. For example, we're better in mobile phones, but in Internet fixed, we, we have to work better. And we have right now a very interesting opportunity in the low strata levels. Right now, the high strata levels has uh, more, uh, it's the internet is uh, more, it's a better penetration. And we're working Vive Digital, our digital plan is concentrated in the low part of the um, stratus. So what we want, first of all, we are focused in micro companies. Only the 7% of the micro companies in our country used in, use internet. So right now we're working very hard to uh, penetrate in the micro companies. And also our for our um, five basic principles in this digital plan is we have to make a partnership with uh, uh, the private sector is a market as far as possible the state as far as need the second thing is that we have to encourage the supply and also the demand of digital serv uh, services to reach a critical mass, we're working to reduce uh, the tax and regulatory barriers, and uh, we don't have uh, a limited uh, resource, so we're working hard to have focus in this uh, invest. And the fifth uh, principle base is that the government will give example. One of the most important things in this, um, in this uh, digital plan is to multiply by four the connections in Internet in four years. So in 2010, we were 2.2 million of connections in Internet, and we are working hard to target in 2014 8.8 uh, uh, connections to internet. This is our digital ecosystem. So, um, and e-government, our program of e-government is in applications. We're working uh, in, in, in infrastructure, in services, in applications, and in users. And I'm going to talk about 
the e-government program that is in, in the ecosystem in, in applications. Uh, our general purpose with uh, this um, uh, strategy is that the government is at a click from the, from the citizen. Uh, the online government is a strategy of national government is very important for us is led by the Ministry of uh, ICTs in our country and we uh, pretend to be more efficient transparent and participate government uh, our specific objectives is uh, efficient and collaboration to contribute to the transparent transparency in public management to promote citizens participation and also to rise uh, comp competitiveness and improve quality of life of our citizens in Colombia we are um, uh, right now the leaders in America Latina our president Santos he this is a priority strategy for our um, our president uh, also uh, the this uh, strategy of e-government is uh, in a law so it's it has a very important response for all the purpose that we have and also the national competitiveness policy is um, based in all this strategy of e-government we are the first in the region and uh, the ninth in the world of, um, of e-government. We are right now in, we have, this, this plan has five different phases. First of all, the information, it was the first uh, phase. The interaction, the transaction, the transformation and democracy is uh, the highest level right now we're working very hard first of all in the fourth level in the national um, in the national order and right now we're working in interaction and trans transaction in the local entities in the different regions we are right now with uh, we increased in since 2007 2007 till 2011 the procedures were 73 procedures procedures online and right now we are like 700 procedures online in 2011 so finally our goals is to have all the procedures of the state in the national order and also in the regional order online. We're working very hard in paperless, but also we're working very hard in the participation of the citizens. So um, we're making a very important campaign with all the social media uh, to promote our plan of e-government in Colombia. Is this yours? Uh, I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria Carolina Hoyos. I'll ask uh, Pantelis Tsotsakis from Greece now to come and take the stage. Uh, good morning. Uh, we are we're experiencing a financial and international finance crisis, and Greece is in the middle of that crisis. Uh, why that happens? It happens, I believe, due to not effective financial controls. Uh, so uh, this is the situation. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm a minister, but I'm not a political person. I'm just two months in the cabinet, and uh, I used to be. Uh, the CEO of the biggest Greek company. So the Prime Minister called me to come and help him to ratify the situation. So I just started two months ago and I'm trying to understand and to see 
what, what procedure, what things we have to do in order to simplify things and to, uh, from, from one side, to reduce cost, from the other side, to increase the productivity, and also at the same time to improve the experience of the end user. So, uh, I will start from uh, uh, the experience of the end user. I think the most, the most important thing that we have to do in Greece is to unify the different registry that exists today in order uh, to have a common e-identification uh, for our citizen. Uh, today, we do have around four registries, and there is not any interaction between the, two, the four registries. That creates a kind of mess that no IT system will work effectively in order to control the situation. So the first priority is to unify the uh, four different registry, syst registry systems. Uh, at the same time, we are going to move to a kind of three-channel uh, uh, citizen uh, approach. That means uh, the citizen could interact with the government who a physical presence uh, uh, through a kind of uh, 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 government store uh, as a physical presence for the people that they don't know or they could not use the internet. We know that it will not be long because everybody now is moving to internet. But anyhow, uh, the second and most important is the e-portal uh, for having access through a single sign-on uh, through one central portal to all the application and services that uh, the government uh, gives. And of course, uh, through a call center. In order for these three different channels to be effective, uh, we need to establish a kind of CRM that is going to interconnect the three different approaches and to be uh, possible to track and to know what we are going to, to do. The second thing which is also important, it has to do with productivity. How we are going to improve the productivity using a kind of uh, government resource uh, planning. In order for, for, you know, in, for us, it's a big opportunity now that uh, we, are go we make a decision that we are going to transform to IPSAS, which is the International Public uh, Sector uh, Accounting uh, Standards. So with IPSAS, we are going to have much more transparency and at the same time, a much more well-organized way on all the resource that has been invested uh, whatever is human capital or whatever is infrastructure. Uh, the, third, uh, the third very important also aspect, it has to do with reducing cost. In order for us to reduce cost, we already have started the, to utilize the computerized e-prescription that uh, gave us an immediate uh, effect, which is reducing 36% the cost of the prescription. Uh, the main reason of that, it was that we insert uh, the kind of clinical uh, trial, uh, clinical protocols, and also that allows the doctor to be more effective, but on the other side, to, to reduce significantly the cost of the, of the prescription. Uh, and that has, uh, we just do it as a pilot to one uh, health insurance organization, and the cost has been decreased 36% the first six months. Uh, at the same time, we move on e-auction, on health, uh, uh, health, uh, you know, health procurement, and uh, the result we got there it was really amazing. Uh, we reduced the cost one-sixth of what the price used to be before. So we are taking all this parallel measure in order to to reduce cost, which I think it's the most important thing that we are facing in Greece, because in, in Greece uh, we do have a public sector which is uh, large, but we have a private sector which is in good shape. And also the, the individual people, they don't have a high level of uh, borrowing. Uh, we do have a high level of borrowing as a country. So if you combine these two, I think the most important uh, 